Well, I'll just start describing like where the bearing surface, what the bearing surfaces are. Oh, okay. Uh, this is well, the starting with this one over here because this is. Yeah, that, that's that's where the brake drum goes on. Okay. You should actually remove that so you can kind of see why it's machined that way. There are. Okay. This is Henry Astridge's 1922 improvement on the device, which worked very well. He was an old engineer. He was probably in his 60s by the time he designed this thing. And he, he I guess there had been about six or seven years of failures with the previous devices, which were had a ratchet restraint system. He went to a brake restraint system, so there's a, an external... Okay, well, why don't you continue on with the rock shaft? I think that's okay. really where the... All right, okay. So, so the, the, the rock shaft, it, you can see that there are pins located yep. here. And those pins are at 90 degree angles in this thing. Right. However, the holes that those pins go into on this rock shaft are at very interesting angles, which seem to have nothing to do with anything on the rock shaft. And the reason for that is that he designed it so that when the propeller handle, which you see on the ground there, is, is down, the control handle is down, it's touching the floorboards of the boat, the skeg will be at its lowest position and the propeller shaft will be straight. So it automatically locates the propeller in the run position and it stays there. And, um, so that, that's the location of those four holes. Yeah. Relative to the square. Relative to the square, yeah. Okay, and that's yeah. a bit of a, a the, mystery. Right. And those four pins there fit into those holes. Okay, so it, so it, makes, it, it makes it pretty exact. Yep. And of course, the handle is fixed onto that. It fits into yeah, that groove, in, you into see. Into here. Yeah, yeah, so there's not very much slop in that handle. Yeah. Should be none. It's nice if it's absolutely tight. So that if you move the handle, you okay. are moving that with no, no, no slop no at all. slop whatsoever. Now the the reason this device was so successful was that all the previous devices had their bearings. The the rock shafts were made of brass, and the housings were made of cast iron. And as soon as you started to use them, of course the galvanic corrosion started up. And so it didn't take very long before if any grease that was put in there in the installation was gone and the rock shaft eventually started slopping around in its bearings. Mm -hmm. So he realized that this was the problem and it's very obvious now that you know we're looking at these things a hundred years later and it, it was a very very serious problem which Henry Astridge realized. So what he did was to get the bearings on the dry side of the rock shaft so they would not be running in the water. So the one bearing, the one that's out in, in behind the brake drum is this one here and so you grease that up nicely and we put the thing in. There's a pack, packing goes in here, asbestos, uh, graphite asbestos uh, packing goes there. On the other side there's a similar setup and there's a, a, a packing gland there which also acts as the bearing surface on that side. So it probably goes together to about, that's probably the position right about there. You can see a mark where this pin oh, yeah. has been, okay? Right. So it'll be about there. And then there are those two hex nuts down there, which are a special thread, which go on here and to allow you to down. tighten this yeah. up. Yeah, you're now, when you're tightening that up, you have to release the clamp on the skeg, which is right here, because the skeg is going to move sideways yes, at the yes. same time. Right. So you always take the cover plate off, you loosen that up, and as you tighten it up, the shaft moves... Shifts a little bit more... Over, yeah, yeah more yeah, to the port yeah, side of yeah. the boat. So you have to allow the skeg to do that, and you have to allow the skeg to kind of be in the center of the device so that it doesn't... Yeah. Eventually what will happen, it will just move over and hit one side and so you're only able then to tighten up the packing gland on this side 
but not, not the, the one other. on this side, yeah. so it won't yeah. work. So, uh, okay, now let's go on to the skeg here. All right. With the uh, shaft in it. Okay. So, so this, in this position. This would be this would be the, the down position. So, so this is when it's is, running. Is running, yeah. It would be it would be approximately like that, maybe a little farther. It's probably about like that, I would think. So that's what it would look like with the down. The propeller goes back there, and when the skeg comes up, what happens is that that moves that way. And, that, and when it's off, it's like that, and you've got about, so actually it's a 15 degree angle on this jack shaft, nominally. Mm -hmm. And of course, when that is up, it's, it's, up, it's, up, actually, inside the, it's up, the, it's up, up inside the housing, it's actually, it ends up being more than a 15 degree angle on the universal joint, because this point is slightly lower than, than where the propeller is. So this, part here at the end of the skeg has a little bit of an angle on the end that comes up against the keel of the bottom of the boat and so it's very critical that that and so this the, yeah and so this space here between the shaft and the, the skeg is allows for not more than nine nine inch diameter ten ten, ten inch ten diameter. inch prop yeah ten inch prop <laughs> yeah anything bigger than ten it'll it'll strike and some people you know one of the key things here is that this bearing is fitted as tightly up that way as possible because if you use some modern bearing that isn't right and this sticks down, guess what the propeller does? It hits that and smashes everything. So you don't want any interference. So the original skeg bearings are pretty tight there. They have to be. So that's what it would look like when it's in the up position. Yeah, can you um, rotate that the, the skeg so that we can see the how the clamping? Like that? No, well, the other see the, the other way. So oh, we can show see show, this, show this too. See how how that's notched there to allow the propeller to come up inside like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's important. Now here there's a three eighths bolt that goes through there that allows it to clamp onto the rock shaft. So let's put the rock shaft in if we can get it to go in. Well, that to face upward. There it is, and that yeah. should be a tight fit. Originally they were fitted very nicely. And then this goes on. And then of course the nuts go yeah. on. And so there's, there's the arrangement right there. And you tighten this just to keep that from jiggling. And so these must fit very, very tightly to begin with. So I always make sure that I'm restoring one. That that would be, in my estimation, too loose already. Yeah. I would yeah. I would shim that. I would I would solder some shims on there just to make sure that it's. Uh, it would. Yeah. I, it, I usually think you, you need to be able to drive it in with a mallet. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Soft face. Soft face. Soft mallet. face. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that that'll help his fellow kind Good. of understand what what the heck is going on. Because he's seen the patent drawings and so on, and I think yeah. this will help sort of make well, sense of what's going on. You might want to show him this thing too. There's a cam. This is how the well, the, the brake arrangement is interesting because you'll see that it uses Model T forward brake lining, but the rivets on this end are about what an inch from the end. These ones are very, very close to the end. And that is because as you tighten this cam downwards to tighten around the drum, that's a restraint, you know, to yeah. keep the thing from wandering up and down. <clears throat> this end moves hardly at all when you do that. All the movement is out at this end. So that is why, that's how they get the brake lining out as close as possible to the ears on this end. And there's actually a space at this end because you don't want it dragging. You want yeah, in fact, there's no, almost, when you clamp, when you activate that yeah. cap, there's almost no motion here to speak That's of. That's correct. And there is a square block on the housing that, that this that fits, fits, fits onto, through. Yeah. And there's a similar block on this side, uh, except that it doesn't fit tightly. This one fits fairly tight. Usually what you do is you tighten it up, but you don't have it rock solid. You have it so that it could move yeah. if it had to. Yeah, yeah the only time <clears throat> when this thing is loose is when you're either moving it up or moving it down. But uh, That's uh, correct. It, it should be nice and yes. snug. 
That's right. Has Otherwise, be, a prop will be coming up. Yeah, at you. it's gonna. Yeah. yeah, and it'll wander if it yeah. can. So this okay. this this cam is interesting here. You see how the, there's a flat ground on there. So that's that's what does it. You can see yeah. the action there. You can actually see the thing move a little bit. Yeah, you see? yeah it moves so about a sixteenth of an inch. That's yeah. enough to lock it down. Yep, nice that's all it takes. Yeah. Yep. Nice Mickey Mouse ears. Oh yeah. Well, of course you you can't use an ordinary. Uh, wing nut on this because of the angle here you've got to have enough space that you can turn yeah, it yeah. And, and you can adjust that when you're uh, running the boat you know so that's yeah. nice if it starts so it to loosen up you can yeah. you can do that without having to get your toolbox out so yeah. there you are okay